it is very difficult, you know, to understand really, you know, the summation of your ideas in, in terms of, you know, this being an attempt not to let the Northeast participate in democracy. Because, I mean, you yourself, you've chronicled uh, how this came about. You talked about it starting in 2009, which is way before the current president assumed office. So uh, for us to now start saying that, you know, this is perhaps an idea to not to let the Northeast participate in democracy, when all the time there has never really been a settled state. You know that development can only happen in an atmosphere of peace. But let us, you know, move a little beyond that. You've also spoken about, you know, people crying out for help in the, in the North is suffering. These are things which people will say that if we are in a state of war, it is consistent with, I mean, people will definitely suffer. People's rights will be hampered because of the security operations going uh, on in that particular area. But how do you see the government also helping and making sure that people buy in on this idea? Because it was seen that there is a huge disconnect from what the government is doing and what the people perceive government to be doing in their area. You see, Mark Boy, we are suffering. I am telling you, the people in the Northeast, whenever I go home, honestly and sincerely, I spend moving from one town to the other, or even within Yola, where I live, it is very difficult, if not impossible, for, proof, for, for, for free flow of movement. You can't associate beyond 8, 9 o'clock in the evening. And therefore, there is that social and psychological dislocation within the system where people have been under in tremendous pressure economically, socially, and otherwise because of this state of emergency. But you see, Mabe, we don't even need state of emergency to fight Boko Haram. With the deployment of the military, with the numerous checkpoints that we have at that point in time, do we need state of emergency? We don't need it. The military, believe me, if the military is serious, if the commanders are serious, if we have commanders that are serious-minded, that they want to fight these people, they can fight them. We have the capacity. We have the capability. And I am telling you, I am very proud of the Nigerian army. I am very proud of the Nigerian security system. I know. If they are challenged, let the president challenge the security, the heads of the security units, the army, the police, the SSS, everything. Let them challenge, let him challenge them. I am telling you, give them the next four or five months, if there is a will and the determination to fight this war. Believe me, if we have serious-minded people that execute this war, I am telling you, we can, we can fight this thing and finish it within two, three months. We, can, we have the capacity. But I don't think there's a political will. That is why we in the Northeast, we believe that the problem is that there's no political will. And there's also the, maybe the deliberate attempt on the side of the center to deny us democracy, to declare it. Hello? Why would you think that? I mean, if what, you've already asked the question as to what joy will any leader derive from his own people being, from seeing his own people being killed? Unless, of course, you're insinuating that the people in the center do not see the people of the Northeast as their own people. And that is a very divisive statement, don't you think? No. No. No, Mabe. Let me tell you, if there is a will, we believe that what is good for... Uh, I mean, what is good for one center, one area, should also be good for another area. Look at since the beginning of this Boko Haram issue. If you look at the problem, the core problem, according to people that have gone to study, and even based on the reports of, show of, of that Lemu, Alaji Lemu, he made it very clear that the issue of gross poverty, gross and monumental poverty within the zone is the most extreme in the West Africa sub-region. And what has the government done? In the last budget, they only sent two billion. What is two billion? When other zones that have less challenges have spent over one trillion naira on its people, 
So why can't we feel that we are marginalized or we are being victimized because we are coming from a region that is very poor, with poor people, poor backgrounds, poor political base, and also that we should be left alone. Except if, except, except, except if I've been convinced beyond all, reasonable, all reasonable, beyond all reasonable doubt, with superior argument, I still stand to be corrected that the North East is deliberately skimmed out, not because of any issue, we believe we've been deliberately skimmed out because we are not important. If we're important to this country, two billion naira is a chicken feed that could be sent to a whole region that has been consumed by war, where we find poverty is even staring in the face. Look, it's a very sad situation. Now pay, come to Northeast and see. I'm sure you've never gone to Northeast. Go and see the level of beggars, even before the emergence of Boko Haram. Go and see desperate and despondent people, people that are abject poverty and penury, and people with hopelessness and helpless backgrounds. Go and see them. Our leaders are God-fearing leaders in the Northeast. Our elders are elders of conscience that will not benefit anything from allowing anybody to go and start killing uh, the, their people. They've led, As, uh, they've been in this country uh, for Mr. Botibo. Well, well, we're really we're really running out of time. Very quickly, as uh, the state of emergency expires in these states, uh, uh, would you say, with the recent happenings, uh, there is that a need for an extension or a lift or a complete emergency in place in that in those region? Honestly, I'm telling you, Suleiman, the state of emergency, as far as I'm concerned. It has outlived its usefulness. The state of emergency should go. Constitutionally, the state of emergency can only be extended six, six months for two weeks, for two terms, nothing more. If there's any extension, we know it's a deliberate ploy to remove our leaders with the aim of denying us democracy, with the aim of trying to bring the losing party to come and capture power by either hook or crook at the center because of massive rigging. And that well, will not agree. Mate, we'd like to thank you. We'd like to thank you. I'm sorry, we're really out of time. We'd like to thank you so very much for uh, speaking with us from our Abuja students. Well, Ibrahim Modibo uh, of a verbatim newspaper, he's also from Nigeria's northeast region, a journalist, and, uh, well, he was also former spokesman uh, to presidential candidate Nuhu Ribadu. Well, uh, Sunrise Daily takes a moment now, and we will return shortly to look at another perspective on the same matter. Join us again.